I have designed this compact 3D printable star tracker that you can build for $50 and in this video I will show you over a year and a half long journey that took me to design this star tracker. When I was starting out with astrophotograph in fall of 2020, I didn't have a lot of money to spend on this very expensive hobby. So I started just with a simple tripod, which worked reasonably good for wide-angle lenses. And on higher focal lengths, it was completely unusable. This is my first untracked image of Orion Nebula and as you can see it's quite bad. I wanted to shoot the objects closer with greater detail but without a star tracker this goal was impossible. Tripod limited me a lot in what I could do because when I would take a longer exposure the stars would start trailing. They would become lines instead of points. Astrophotographers use this simple device called star tracker that we would align to earth axis of rotation. Simply put, we would point at Polaris. <laughs> when star tracker is pointing at Polaris, it would start rotating at the same rate as earth, which allow us to take longer exposures of nebulae and galaxies, because now the camera is moving at the same speed as the region on sky that we are trying to capture. So, when I learned in January of 2021 about Open Astro Tracker, which is fully 3D printed go to star tracker, I decided to make it. I already had a 3D printer, and $100 versus $300 was for me a huge difference that allowed me to do astrophotography. But this concept had its flaws. Most notably was its size, which limited me in taking under dark skies because I couldn't fit it in my backpack and go hike with it. As you can see, it's quite big. And I was unable to put it on tripod, which limited me in places where I could take it because they needed to be flat. As you can see, they needed to be flat. So I set up on non mission to build my own star checker, which would be smaller than Open Astro Checker, cheaper, 3D printable, and was able to handle the gear that I was using at that time, which meant two and a half kilograms setup consisting of Canon 500D with 300 mm Tear 3S lens. It turned out to be much harder than I thought. Since this was my first time designing something more complex than a box, I ended up with this. I have decided to build the polar wedge with warm gears because you are not able to back drive them and Star Adventure 2 was using them in their polar wedge design. To save some cost I have also decided to 3D print a ball bearing which ended up terribly because it had too much play and the quality of my 3D prints at that time was terrible. I also tried to make the gear ratio high as possible so I did the crazy thing of putting two warm gears in the main axis so I would achieve an extreme gear ratio of 7200 which no mount at the time had. For obvious reasons, let's say that the 3D printed warm gears were not great and not smooth and also the idea of putting there only an axial bearing wasn't the greatest one and in terms of electronics I was completely lost. I tried to make the stepper motor move with A4988 driver but I didn't succeed. Even Indian guys on YouTube didn't help me, which was crazy, they can solve everything literally. So I tried to load the star checker with the gear I wanted to use, which is my 25 kg setup, and it unexpectedly broke. The polar wedge wasn't able to bear uh, such a heavy setup and was flexing a lot, and the idea of not using 100% infill didn't help it either. So I abandoned this idea and project for three months until I have came up with new ideas on how to make it better. When I started building a second version, I did some research about Star Trekker drive design and overall about Star Trekkers, and I have learned few things. Most important thing is to select a right drive system, and there are lots of them, I mean lots of them. In drive system we want to have low periodic error, 
The periodic error is an error that causes the object that we are following to move from side to side. It's caused by the gears not being perfectly round, which is causing the speed to change. Another important factor is a backlash, which is caused by gears not perfectly meshing and having small gap between them, which causes that the first gear will rotate and it will take some time for the second gear to start spinning. There are other factors that are important when choosing a right gears for Star Checker, but I won't get into them because this video would be too hard long. Based on what I have said, I have decided to go with belts because they had low periodic error and no backlash and were cheap. And I have also decided to use them because others have successfully used them, most notably Open Astro Tracker or Avon Instruments in their mounts. There are other types of gearing, most notably warm gears which are used in almost all mounts but are quite difficult to 3D print then in quality which would be better than trash. And then there are strain drives aka harmonic drives which are possible to 3D print but it requires a 3D printer with good accuracy and the wave generator needs to be flexible which could become a problem in the winter because plastic tend to get stiffer. I was also worried about the longevity of such a 3D printed gear. And there is also the problem with periodic error, which is in these mounts higher than in belt drives or other types of drives. And having a harmonic drive without guiding is not a good idea. So let's go back to belts. They have one small, small issue. Their gear ratio is small, so if I would want to make a mount which would have reasonable gear ratio, it would be huge. So I have decided to use belt gearbox, which would allow me to get higher gear ratios. Open Astro mount and other instruments in their mounts are using them, so it was a quite a safe bet. So, with these newly learned things, I went back to the driving board for a few weeks and I have made a completely new design. As you can see, it has completely new wedge design and this nice gearbox with belts and many new features. There is no chance that it will not work. It's a second version, it must work. <sighs> Except it didn't work at all. I couldn't assemble the gearbox and the 3D printed pulleys didn't work. And it had so many issues. It was so terrible that I even didn't bother to test it outside. At least the wedge didn't break in half this time. Based on what I have learned, I went yet again back to driving board and I have designed a yet a better version. For this version, I fixed the most obvious issues like using actual metal pulleys and not a 3D printed ones. I did also make the wedge better and tougher. As you can see, I have upgraded the threaded rod from M3 to M5 and I also made a small thing that holds the threaded rod closer to the base so it would be more stable. But there was still an issue. I didn't know how to assemble the electronics and make the stepper motor move. I tried it before and I failed. So I did better research about electronics and stepper motors this time and I will tell you what I have learned. These are only the basics. So stay with me, it will be quite short. Now you can see a simple circuit diagram of electronics used to control the mount. Don't judge me for using MS Paint. Uh, there are only four components and I will talk about three of them. First is the microcontroller. I have chosen Arduino Uno because it's one of the most used microcontrollers for DIY projects. On this microcontroller runs a simple firmware that sends a pulses to driver which then based on these pulses turn a stepper motor. As you can see the code is very simple. First we declare output pins and after that we will make a loop in which we will send the pulses every 66 milliseconds. 
Second is a stepper motor driver which takes the pulses from microcontroller and makes the stepper motor move based on them. For stepper motor driver it's most important to know how accurate it is and how big stepper motor it can handle. For this star checker I am using very small stepper motor so I don't have to bother with how much it can handle. For us the most important is to know how accurate it is. Stepper motor have this one small trick that makes possible to make smaller steps than the stepper motor has. It's called micro stepping, which works something like this. It would take a one full step and divide it into multiple smaller steps. This should increase the smoothness of motion. Third is a stepper motor. In stepper motor we want to know how many steps it can make per one revolution. More is usually better. On the market there are mainly two resolutions of stepper motors. Most commonly used is 200 steps per revolution stepper motor which could be also used if you don't have access to a better 400 steps per revolution stepper motor which has two times the angular resolution. Fourth is a step up module which increases the voltage from 5 volts to 12 volts. After doing some research I choose the LV8729 driver. I choose it because it was cheaper than TMC2209 driver and it also had a 128 micro stepping. The 128 means that it can divide one step of the stepper motor to 128 micro steps. It wasn't good as 256 micro stepping that the TMC2209 used but I thought to myself that it doesn't matter and it will be good enough for me. So I built a circuit and it didn't work. So I wondered why. I did like 10 tests and I still wasn't able to figure it out. So I desperately tried to change the driver to TMC2209 and everything started working after that without the problem. So I switched to TMC2209 drivers because compared to LV8729 it worked and it was more used. Now I know why it was much more used. So I tried it outside and it finally worked. After developing it for half a year I managed to do a 30 second exposure at 105 millimeters on my light camera Lumix FZ1000. This is the image of Orion. But the checker wasn't good enough because the top half circles were interfering with tripod and the bottom lazy Susan bearing had a lot of play. Based on what I have learned, I have decided to make yet another, hopefully, better version. For this fourth version, I had more hope that it would work better than the last version. I have done few upgrades from the last version. I have changed the Lazy Susan bearing to a radial bearing because the Lazy Susan bearing had too much play. I also removed the half circle so they won't interfere with tripod. But this made the mount less stable and more wobbly because it was flexing too much and the electronics was hidden under the wedge so I would save some space. When I tried to load it with gear I planned to use it was so wobbly that if I would look bad at it it would break or start trailing. I am surprised that it didn't break in half like the first version. There were few things wrong, most notably were the bearings which were too small for such a mount and also the thickness of parts, they were really thin and I wouldn't believe them even if they were made out of steel. Even though I decided to test it with my main setup and it unexpectedly didn't work. So I tried it with lighter Lumix FZ1000 which worked reasonably okay but I wouldn't call it an upgrade from the last version in terms of performance. At least the electronics was better and prettier this time. So I decided to make yet another version which would, which would fix these issues. For this version a few issues from the last versions were fixed. 
now there are real big pairings which would make it more stable and the parts were made thicker so they would handle higher payload but sadly I was forced to move the electronics from bottom of the wedge to separate box because there was now not enough space for it. It had one advantage, if the electronics would broke I could just move the box and fix the problem while having the star trickle portal aligned. And I could add display to it. I never managed to get the display work by working but yeah I could do it. Thankfully this version worked much better than the last one. I even managed to shoot on it with my mind rig and it turned out to be pretty good as you can see. It wasn't perfect because it had still a few issues but I could imagine using it. It wasn't stable enough and the warm gear at the front could be moved easily because it had too much play. Once again I have made another better version. This time there wasn't as many upgrades from the last version. Due to lack of stability of the last version I have added back the half circles to increase its sturdiness. This time they are on the base so they wouldn't interfere with tripod but would interfere with camera <laughs> and the display was removed because I didn't program it and I used only a simple firmware. When I have tested it outside I was amazed by its performance. I managed to do 2 minute exposure at 300 millimeters with my main rig. This is an image of Orion I have shot with this setup and as you can see it's pretty good. I have measured the periodic error of the tracker which tells me how accurate it is. It was around 15 arc seconds. This measurement was confirmed by Conard Serman who measured periodic error of 17 arc seconds which is much better than a commercial trackers like Starventure 2i which has periodic error of 40 arc seconds. After that successful night I have decided on 24th December in 2022 to release the tracker. I have made a post about it on reddit and it got some traction. There were even two articles written about it. People started building it and they were quite happy with it. A few people were interested in it. One of them was Conrad Serman who helped me a lot with testing. When the project was growing I made a few tutorials on how to make it. While doing it I have decided to make it controllable from a phone which turned out to be much harder than I thought. I have spent a week developing it and I couldn't find somebody who would help me with it until I found Yugal Yesing who developed the firmware and PCB. He managed to move this project forward by a lot. Thanks for that. Even with these small upgrades I felt that it wasn't good enough. It had one issue. It wasn't sturdy enough. Yet again. I have closely inspected the tracker searching for anything that could cause it to be wobbly and I have came with these three issues. Wedge joint had too much play so I have increased tolerances to minimize it. Bearings on the big pulley had too much play so I have added another bearing to minimize it. Parts were too thin so I made them yet again thicker. I also did reduce the number of parts. I have made one part from these three parts. I also made the big pulley thicker because I thought there was a little bit of flexing in it. Now I can say this is a final version that will most likely get minimal upgrades in future because it's almost perfect. When I was testing this latest version I managed to shoot 400 second exposure on 300 millimeter lens without guiding. Yes, you hear me right, 400 seconds. This blew my mind because there was no DIY tracker that would manage to do this. Not even commercial ones under $500 are good as this one. With this performance and cost, this could be a game changer. We are not stopping. I have designed the tracker to be upgradable. So I have after some time designed the deck upgrade called Radek. This upgrade allows you to have go to and computer control. I have released it few weeks back and it's in 
data testing. It's a first version that has few issues, but now I'm working on a new version. If you want, you can download this version from Pinterest.com and try it yourself. I would like to thank the community and people who had built it. If you want to join us, you can find link below where you can join our great community on Discord. You can find all built instructions on printables.com in the link below and download it everything for free. If you don't have the time to source all the parts or you don't own a 3D printer or you want to support me, you can visit my e-shop in the link below where you can buy 3D printed parts or Star Checker kits for great prices. This would allow me to continue in development. That's all for this video. I am glad that you stayed till the end. Now you can see pictures of trackers built by members of our community around the world. Thank you a lot for everything you did. Goodbye.